Lord. All right, I'm sharing my screen. Can you guys see what looks like a Chrome browser up? Uh, I'm gonna, this is a page from a book by uh, Francis Ching, a former faculty member at University of Washington. He wrote some really famous uh, seminal books on beginning design. Um, and so this one I think is from, I can't remember exactly which book this is. I have several of them myself and we have multiple copies of these in our, our architecture library. Um, form, space and order or uh, architectural drawing illustrated, I can't remember. Um, but what he does is he distills a lot of information down in, um, it's not a lot of reading, more like looking at um, drawings and sort of uh, showing examples and things like that. Um, and so uh, what you'll see here, so we've been doing a lot of stuff with isometric, right? So if you look at um, this sort of section called orthographic drawings, flat drawings, right? And then paraline drawings and in perspective. We've talked just a little bit about this. We've been generating these axonometric or isometric drawings, right? Which are also known as paraline drawings, meaning that all the lines, it's a three-dimensional view, but all the, the lines in a particular direction remain parallel rather than um, converging to a, a, a vanishing point. At the same time, we maintain scale throughout the drawing. Um, and so, uh, you know, we don't have any foreshortening, we don't have any um, perspect perspectival um, uh, um, shrinking, right? Like as you get further away, things get smaller, right? Um, so in isometric, that doesn't happen, right? We keep everything to scale, it's sort of an abstraction uh, still. Um, a three-dimensional one. Um, perspective, again, is trying to sort of simulate um, how our eyes see. So in this case, we have a two-point perspective. Again, I'm just going over this because I don't think it hurts to, to sort of repeat myself here. But as you can see here, you know, everything going, all the lines going in this direction converge to a vanishing point. All the lines, or edges in this direction converge on a vanishing point over here, right? Whereas these lines moving in the same direction remain parallel. In fact, this is a, whoops, let me undo that last line I drew. It wasn't very straight. This is a true 30-30 um, isometric like we were generating in, in Rhino as an example. So we'll get to perspective later on when we start to generate some rendered perspectives and then we start to bling them out in Photoshop. Um, but for now, what I wanna focus on are these orthographic drawings. In other words, um, scale drawings where, where we're looking at something straight on in a planar fashion. Um, and the typical ones are plans, elevations, and sections. Okay. So if you get a sense of what the overall massing and form, right, the shape of this looks like from the axon, and you understand what it looks like at eye level and perspective, right? We can see an elevation, what we're doing at is we're looking at the front and the side and the back and then the other side, right? So elevation means just sort of looking at something, right? Um, but but the, the surfaces that we see are perpendicular to our eyes. Right? Um, and so that sort of plane, the drawing plane is, is a sort of one that's, that's again, perpendicular to our, our eye sight or our gaze. Um, and so elevations are simply looking at, at stuff, right, from the side or the front, the back. You can see that we always provide a, a nice ground line here, right? So that this thing isn't just floating in space, but we actually show the ground. Sometimes we even shade that ground in and give that drawing a nice sort of base, right? And typically we go around the, the major parts with a thicker line weight then some of the minor parts or, or parts that are further away with a, a smaller line weight. Um, some of this, the secondary and tertiary details with smaller and smaller, thinner line weights, right? All right, plan view is looking at something from the top, okay? And um, in this case, the typical sort of floor plan drawing, not only are we looking at, let's say a building from the top orthographically, right? So everything, is measured out and into scale. Um, not only is it just looking at it from the top, but sometimes, oftentimes we cut it 
So we cut it away almost like a, a horizontal section. Okay. So a cross section through the building where we go four feet from the, the floor and then we move everything above that sort of cutting plane. And we'll literally do that in Rhino here in a few minutes. We'll create a clipping plane. We'll move it four feet up and then we'll make everything above it disappear. And we'll be looking down at our building. Okay. You can see here that we have things like door swings, right? Stairs that we see. This is underneath the section cut. So we're seeing those again in elevation, right? Beyond that section cut. Um, and uh, we have things like windows, we have things like walls, you know, we have double lines because walls have thickness to them, right? Okay, and then if we look at elevation and we cut a section to the building, right? We, we take a vertical plane and slice the building and remove what's in front of that plane, right? Then we get a building section. So similar to a plan, except instead of using a horizontal plane to cut through the building, Use a vertical plane. And so you can see the parts of the building, walls, floors, ceilings, roofs that are actually being cut through, right? And in plan and section, the things that are actually being cut, those are the things that are emphasized the most. Remember, we provide emphasis with our line drawings with line weights, right? So we beef up the line weights around the parts that are being cut through. And then oftentimes, although not in this drawing, but I'm sort of doing it here, trying to poche or fill the stuff that's being cut, right? In this case with a really gross chartreuse green. I would never actually do that. In the section, we also cut through the ground, right? And so we show the ground. And you can see here that we see some details like the windows in the back, right? Those aren't being cut through. Those are beyond the section cut and things that again, we're seeing from the front to the side um, and we draw those as if they're secondary information or tertiary information and in elevation. Okay, let me just clear this out. Let's go to a different one that sort of gives us a similar, but maybe slightly different perspective here. Huh, pun intended. So, um, sorry, I couldn't resist. Okay, let me change. Yes, okay. And so if we see again, a sort of axon or isometric, if this is a 30-30 isometric, right? Of, in this case, a really awful looking um, hip roof house. I mean, this is about as silly as it looks. It's not bad, but whatever, right? We can see that elevations would be as if we're, our eyes are here looking at the side, right? And everything's sort of put on this plane, right? this plane that's perpendicular to our eye, right? So we have the drawing plane, everything gets flattened that we can see. Um, you can see that, look at this, thicker line weights around the major silhouette, right? Slightly less thick line weights around some of the, the major geometries here. And then the thinnest line weights for some of these details, like a little bit of this double line there, um, where we can see um, the fascia board um, you know, the, the opening here for the door, right? Here we see the door three-dimensionally. Here, we're looking at an elevation. So think about it being flattened. Here's another elevation, right? If you sort of think about your eye looking in this direction. Right? Again, um, there's our sort of drawing. Right? Roof plan would be looking from the top, but just sort of looking at the top in elevation. And then if we thought about a, a true sort of true floor plan over here, then we would basically slice this with a plane four feet above the ground, right? Remove everything above, right? And so we see doorways as openings. We see windows, glass gets cut through. It's just really thin, thin compared to walls. The painted glass is it's almost just a line, right? As opposed to walls with a double line. Um, same thing with a section. You can sort of, I guess, better, um, hopefully better understand the sort of anatomy of these, these different drawing types, right? Here again, sort of beefing up the, the parts that are actually being cut through as the sort of thickest lines, right? And then we see some of that stuff beyond an elevation. All right. So today, we're going to generate some floor plans. Tomorrow, we'll generate some sections and elevations. How's that sound? All right, perfect. I didn't hear anything, but you know, 
I assume if there's no, um, if there aren't any objections, then maybe we're all good here. Oh, I just happen to have a board called plans. You can see that there's no right or wrong way necessarily to do plans um, when you're trying to, to, to sort of uh, communicate design information, right? Um, you know, the kind of plans that you'll be generating here in school are a little different mostly um, from the kind that you generate in office for let's say construction, construction documents for the actual full CD set, right? So um, you only get to maybe schematic design plans slash maybe so, you know, up to 50% DD plans. Um, we're not gonna actually add a bunch of dimensions and tags and, and things like that to these, right? Um, that's something that you can learn in an office, you know, that extra layer of information um, on, on an internship. Um, but what you can see again, is that you know sometimes they're just really simple line drawings. Other times people add shadows and things like that to sort of make certain things pop or to add a little three-dimensionality to them, or to begin to talk about where dark spaces are versus light spaces. You know, good one, good plans are developed over time and you can continue to add detail to them. So let's just take a look at, let's say this one, for instance, I'm just gonna try to blow it up just a little bit here so we can see it a little better. You can see there's actually quite a bit of information in here. First and foremost, the darkest areas are walls that are being cut through, right? So those are double line, sort of thick, thicker um, lines, right? Filled in with black. And so you can see, again, that sort of figure ground relationship between what's being cut, right? Mass, matter, um, versus what's, what's open space or volume, right? These rooms inside by looking at sort of black versus white, right? um, or black versus, in this case, just a little bit of gray in here, right? Um, you can see that we have some lines outside or some curves. Those are actual topography lines, right? So talking about the, the fact that the ground outside isn't quite flat. Um, we start to see um, trees and other plants, you know, like sort of planting patterns outside. See a center line and then a circle, start talking about the canopy size. Um, sometimes you even put these hatchers on to sort of talk about uh, um, if you have a, a sort of fall off, right? Like the, maybe there's a curb there or something like that. Or sometimes it's talking about just the flow um, of, the, uh, of the topography again. Right? Um, sometimes, you know, when we have, let's say pavers on the outside, right? An outdoor room or a corridor, um, sometimes on the inside, what we do is we'll actually add a texture, a pattern to begin to talk about, um, you know, those, those surfaces on the inside. So for instance, oftentimes if you're looking for apartments, for instance, right, you look at a floor plan of a, of a condo unit or an apartment unit, right? Sometimes they'll show this sort of tiled or linoleum sort of grid on the wet area of floors, like for the kitchen and the bathroom versus um, you know, leaving it blank for the living room and the, the hallway and the, the bedrooms and stuff like that that are, that are carpeted or something like that, right? So um, sometimes we can differentiate spaces or the ground plane, right? Um, by adding that kind of detail, that information, even adding some entourage, not only trees, but maybe cars, right? Or if you have a loading dock, adding the sort of silhouette of a truck pulling up to it, right? To sort of show how that might work. You start to see stairs in elevation, right? All of the information that isn't being cut through, we're seeing beyond that section cut, right? Is elevation information. So it's lighter, but it's there. So we might draw like the patterns and uh, uh, um, joints in the sidewalks and, and pavements and walkways around our, our building or the, the, the walkways in general, right? The trees and things like that. Um, you know, furniture is shown in here. Um, this is one way to do a door swing. They're just doing it as triangles, right? Um, let me get to a better example here. Let's take a look. Sometimes it just helps before we start to try to try to make drawings is to look at some good drawings and read them, right? So let's just take a look. Try to find one with a good amount of detail, but, but large enough that we can really kind of see it here. Maybe I'll oh, try this one. Not sure how big that is. Well, it might be fairly big. It's taking me to design boom. Hmm. All right, never mind. Let's 
see if I can find one here. I'm just looking for one that's kind of big enough to, to actually sort of show better here. Uh, just try to zoom in on this one a little bit. Yeah, same thing here, right? Um, this one does have some tags and, and uh, dimensions and things like that on here. So you start to see some round circles, right? Um, that's talking about um, a structural grid, oftentimes along the center lines of columns. Um, you'll start to see dimension strings then up here um, aligned with those. Um, sometimes you'll see tags that talk about where a, another drawing is, is actually um, uh, looking or being and being cut at. Like you start to see it's like section tags and elevation tags in here. That's really kind of blurry. Let me see if I can, again, my apologies. I thought I might be able to find some um, bigger, larger images here. Arch Daily might have a good, let's see if. Arch Daily has a, let's look at this. This is just a house. Must be nice to have a lot of money and actually be able to hire an architect to design your house. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Some models. Oh, come on. Just get to the, oh, you can see here sort of sort of a la carte menu of sort of different types of uh, configurations for what looks like bedrooms. Ah, oh, here we go. Let's see if I can zoom in on this a little more. So a lot of detail in this, right? This is a really nice plan, really nice drawing. First and foremost, I mean, again, there's a lot of information in here, but what do you, what do you see first? Right, you start to understand the spatial flow and organization of the building because the things that pop out the most are, are the walls, right? So the things that are actually being cut and plan. Second and third floor plan, right? And here's a section, you know, we see again, well, there's a nice deep cut courtyard here. Right? You can see the, the ground, you can see floors and walls, roofs, all sort of cut in section. And then the elevations, right? So looking at it from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Okay. Enough screwing around on the internet. Let me go ahead and get Rhino going in the meantime. Let me pull up the chat just in case anybody has anything. I, I don't necessarily see the chat. My, um, I'm sharing my screen. So if, if you need me to need me to, to pause or something, just, just shout at me if I'm not responsive to something you type in the chat. Again, just a quick reminder while Rhino is opening up here. So this is uh, that demo I was doing or using with you guys when you first started to make these planar compositions. You were learning how to draw and then model some things in Rhino moving things around after you modeled them, um, thinking about spatial composition and uh, just waiting on this to open up. Shouldn't take too long here. But this is what I'm gonna use to start off with. And we're gonna, we're gonna um, talk about, uh, if you're writing or taking notes, um, I think the, the name of the game today is clipping planes, right? So that's a command, clipping planes. Plane is in like, you know, a sort of planar surface. Um, and uh, clipping is in like, you know, clippers, like when you go to the barber, they pull out the shears and All right, so clipping plane. So here we go. Shouldn't be any surprises here. I am gonna set this to, I think right now it's saying top, but it's set to isometric view. That's a parallel view. I'm gonna set this back to perspective just so we can sort of see it a little nicer here. Just as soon as, you know, I had Windows working so well. I don't know what's going on here. I had this open before every single time. It's doing something. I can see these notes down here. I wonder if it's Autodesk trying to download the latest version of Revit or something. Turn the sound off of my phone while I wait. All right, it looks like 
Okay, I have this unshaded. I'm going to say set view perspective. All right, now, now it sort of looks like it would with my eyeballs, right? Okay. Now, a couple of things I mentioned when I was talking about section elevation plan was the ground, right? And so I'm actually going to quickly model on the ground plane. Before, I was like, don't worry about the ground plane when it comes to these axons. They were sort of floating around in space in order to sort of make it look like there was stuff around it, you started to add entourage like trees and, and um, humans. And you, we found these silhouettes and you were able to sort of populate the, the drawing with them, right? This time I'm gonna very deliberately make a, 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 a um, ground plane, okay? So I have all four viewports up and I'm just gonna go to my top view. It's the easiest way to draw a horizontal plane in XY, uh, XY plane is to go to top view and I'm just gonna draw one. It's gonna be horizontal automatically, right? Because in top view, my construction, my default construction plane is that X, Y or horizontal plane where Z equals zero. All right, so in perspective, you can see that it's over here, right? My building just touches it right at the, right at the base, which is perfect. All right. Okay, so we're not quite done, but I'm gonna be doing some things back and forth between viewports. So remember, sometimes I might just wanna see one viewport and I double click on that, that label for the viewport. It toggles it and it blows it up to fill my screen, right? In this case, perspective. But I'm gonna go back to seeing all four of my viewports at once. I can double click again and toggle it back to four, right? I think the, here we go, yeah, few, four, four viewports. So you can go back and forth there if you prefer the button, but I always just double click the labels. Um, and again, in this case, just, I don't know what my color scheme is in Windows, um, but, but it looks like, you know, by default, my viewports are gray, except for the, the active one, the one that I clicked in at the latest, and that one's turned blue. So my active viewport right now is perspective. That's really important because what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to top view. I'm gonna type in the command clipping plane. So again, I'm gonna draw one of those clipping planes, one of those sort of section cut planes, right? And since we're doing a floor plan, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make a horizontal one, right? And so that's why I'm going to the top view. So I went to top view and I wanted to make a horizontal plane for the ground, but it also is a pretty good viewport if I'm gonna make a horizontal plane in general, including for clipping planes. I'm just going to make, click and drag and make a plane. Right. Okay. Now, you can see that I'm missing some information on my top view, right? And I'm just gonna select this plane so it shows up as magenta and all of my viewports here. But what you can see, I think now as I zoom out and all my viewports all at once, right? As you can see that in top view, I have a, a sort of rectangular plane, a square plane. And you can see in perspective and then from my front and side ele elevations, right? but I also have a line, a sort of normal projecting from the center point of the frame. And that's a sort of direction line, sort of telling me which direction that the, the clipping plane is looking, right? Okay. So right now the clipping plane, because I, the top view was my active view, the clipping plane is only clipping things in my top view. So I wanna change that. So I, I'm selected my clipping plane, right, again, so you can see it, it's in my case, it's, it's when I highlight something, it turns magenta. So I changed my color scheme here. And I'm gonna go over to properties, okay? So remember this, right, the box on the right here where we have properties and layers and render properties and things like that. Go to properties, the sort of um, color wheel. And then you can see that there's several different types of properties. There's, you know, that's sort of the object properties in general, right? Here I can see what kind of object it is. I can see how it's displayed. I can see what layer it's on. Right, I can, I can alter its material properties if I'm gonna assign a material or shader to it. You can see here, when I have a clipping plane selected, there are specific options for clipping planes, clipping plane properties. And so one of the things I can do is I can flip the direction the clipping plane's looking, right? By simply flipping it, you can see each time I flip it, right? It flips the direction. You can see that that line, that normal, now it changes its direction, so up and then back it down, up, down, up, down. I'm just gonna leave it down. 
But I'm also gonna turn this on and say views to clip, right? In other words, apply this clipping plane across the perspective view now. All right, and what you can see is that everything behind this clipping plane now is removed, been removed from the model. I'm just going to quickly go to the move command. I'm gonna move this clipping plane in elevation, turn my ortho on, right? You can see in real time that as I move my clipping plane up, right? I start to move the plane where I'm cutting a, a plan. Right. So we're not lit, we're not really like trimming or splitting our model, but we are visually trimming, right? So we're just telling Rhino below this plane, show the model. Above this plane, don't show the model, right? Okay, let me just turn off my object snaps, right? And so we can position this at the first floor plan or the second floor plan or a third floor plan or you know, or whatever, a fifth floor plan or a roof plan. Okay. So let's take a look at what we have here. I'm just gonna move it up a bit here just so we can see what we have, where we can see some of those openings for windows and, and doorways, right? I'm gonna turn my top view to shade it as well. Okay, there, is that making sense? Isn't that cool? I mean, it's kind of fun, right? Yeah, I mean, it's always, I mean, it beats the hell of drawing all these things by hand over and over again. Believe me, I, I had to do that. Um, I'm gonna turn actually top view to render. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, so we can see some of the three-dimensionality of it. Then in render settings, you don't have to do this, but I just, it helps us maybe visualize in what otherwise it's a flat view, right? Our top view, our plan view, right? And now we're actually slicing the section for the plan. Um, I'm just gonna go to render settings. I'm gonna turn on the sun. Let's see if I can get some, some actual crisp shadows. Actually, it looks like I'm just really drowning things out. I'll turn the sun off, don't worry about it. Turn the intensity down. No, maybe I'll just leave it. There we go. All right, but again, we can sort of see where there's, where there's walls and openings. Now, the one thing, another thing that's kind of nice about this is that we can see where things are actually being cut. So we see all this information in the background, like floors and, and other sort of platforms and things like that, right? So if I turn it this way, you can sort of see what we're looking at three-dimensionally. Okay. So I can see this information beyond the section cut, right? Let's say, um, you know, this part of the wall, which is really just this part of a, um, a sill, right, for a window, and this part, which is just a sill for a window, I can see that in elevation. What it's doing also, though, is outlining the stuff that's actually being cut, right? So, um, you know, in this case, this is what we would beef up with line weights and, and then fill in with, with some poche, right, with fill. Okay. All right. Now, my first floor plan is really kind of boring, right? I mean, honestly, it's pretty boring. Right, let's talk about a few more things that, um, that we can understand from a, a floor plan, right? Sometimes you'll see dashed lines of stuff that is actually above um, the floor plan cut, right? So let me just move this cut up just a little bit, this plane. Let's see if I just move it up a bit. So you can start to see some of the stuff above, right? So typically if we have overhangs and cantilevers and eaves and things like that above our section cut, right? Let's say the roof extends out past the outside walls. It happens a lot, right? Oftentimes you'll try to drain water and melted snow and things away from your wall, right? So you extend those things past it, right? Or sometimes it's about providing some shade, right? Um, along your walls or windows or walkways up against your, your building or house or whatever. So. Oftentimes what we'll do is we'll take these overhangs and we'll dash them in, right? So that people can understand what's above the floor plan, right? Um, and that's where we use dash lines. Okay. So um, I'm, where I'm cutting this seems kind of arbitrary at the moment. I'm just sort of moving this around, you know, right? Typically we would move these up 
four feet above the finished floor in each case. So four feet above grade, another four feet where, you know, wherever you would say floor is, right? Um, it's a little, um, it's a little more, uh, the way we did these planar compositions is a little um, more ambiguous as to where a floor is, right? Or, or what's a second floor versus a second and a half floor or something like that, right? So um, that's fine. I'm not too worried about that at the moment. Okay. What I do like is to sort of cut into these and start to understand what we have on the inside and the outside here. I think that's really kind of helpful and instructive, right? Again, if I place it here, I can see, again, where I'm cutting through. In fact, it looks like it's right here. Yeah, so I'm cutting through this wall. I'm cutting through a part of this wall over here, right? This part of the wall drops down. So I see that just an elevation behind, right? I see a wall here, a wall here, a wall here, right? There, there, and there. I see just a little bit of an opening there, I guess, where there's a window before I get to more of these walls and intersections. And an actual floor plan, typically we would trim all this out so that we just, you know, sort of make a nice outline around the, all the wall stuff. Okay. All right, so let's say I wanted to cut a, a floor plan here, right? I already have my, my clipping plane. Right? One of the ways we could do that, if I just sort of double click and bring my top view up, Let's go to shaded view. Is I could do a make 2D. I mean, it almost sounds like a cop out at this point, right? But yeah, it's so useful. Why not? All right, I'm going to select everything. I don't care about the. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll select this this plane. Why not? I'll select everything. Cell, all. Why is it not selecting everything? Let's see here. Oh, maybe it just doesn't look like it's selecting everything, but it is. Hopefully, sell all. There we go. Whatever. So I'm just going to go ahead and say make 2D. Okay. And there's going to be one more setting I look at here. So right now it's saying, okay, your current view is set to top view. Are you sure you want to make that draw that one? I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to leave that there. Um, I'm just going to leave most of this the same. Tangent edges, yes. Scene silhouette, yes. Clipping plane intersections. What that's going to do is it's going to take all of this stuff where it's showing where the, the clipping plane is actually cutting through something and slicing it away. And it's going to put those outlines on their own light layer, which will be really handy because we'll use those later to beef up their line weights and fill them in with, with poche, right? So I'm going to go ahead and clip that one on. I'll use the viewport rectangle, why not? And hit okay. Ta-da. All right. Now, while I'm here, you don't have to do this. I'm just gonna do it just to see what it looks like. It sounds kind of fun. I don't know. I'm gonna turn this clipping plane. I'm just gonna hide it real quick. It's still there and it's still doing stuff, but it's not gonna be drawn. And I'm just going to capture this rendered view, right? Capture to file, right? Just like we've been doing transparent background. It'll still have that ground plane and still, still be casting a little bit of a shadow on that, that plane that we created. Viewport, yeah, sure, whatever. And uh, I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm gonna put this on the desktop. Um, I don't really mind if it's a JPEG or a PNG. So in this case, I'll say, Plan rendered underlay. Not all plans have a sort of rendered with some soft shadows underlays underneath them or anything. Sometimes we just do things purely with just lines, right? Um, but I, I thought maybe it'd be kind of nice. We can always double check this while I'm right here before I move my viewport around, right? Thought maybe it'd be a good idea to try. All right. It's taking a second. Why I'm not sure, but it is. So. Okay, now I'll go back and just turn this to shaded again. Let me go back to out. Let's see where I put this. So it, it drew, again, here's my XY000 point over here. And it drew this plan for me. 
let's take a look at this plan drawing that it just sort of drew and, and deployed on my XY plane for me. We have that viewport rectangle. You can see the edges of that ground plane that we drew. Um, you can see these things. Let's just take a look at the different layers. We have curves, just sort of regular uh, curves and lines that we can see in elevation. We have the clipping plane intersections, then we have the scene silhouette, then we have the viewport rectangle. Let's just turn these things on and off. So you can see the clipping plane uh, intersections, right? Now we have those walls. Oh yeah, look at that, mm -mm -mm. right? And if I wanted to, right, I've turned everything else off, I think, scene silhouette, viewport rectangle, yeah. I could sort of trim these out myself and make these all sort of closed polylines, right? So why don't I do that? I'll just clean this up right now. Let me go ahead and hit save really quickly before I do anything else. You can see these are all sort of separate line segments, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna start using some trimming and splitting here. Say trim, and I want to use these as cutting objects to then trim that away. I want to use this as a cutting object. Let's trim these away. And I'll just select this and hit delete. We'll do the same thing here, right? So right-clicking um, will um, both end the command and then right-click again, we'll repeat the last command. So select cutting objects, just use all of these to cut each other away here. Right-click to end it, right-click to re- to do another trim command, repeat it. Okay, select the cutting objects. So right click now, select the objects to trim. So the parts that I wanna trim away. Sound effects are always optional, of course, but you know. I'm gonna select all of these things. I'm just gonna hit that puzzle piece join button. It said 31 single line segments have now been uh, joined up into four closed curves. So there's a closed curve, there's a closed curve, there's a closed shape, there's a closed shape, right? Curves, shapes, lines. Lines are just curves with zero curvature, right? So, all right, I can turn these back on. Let's take a look at, there we go. Very interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna hit save one more time. I'll just export this stuff out to Illustrator, right? Illustrator is where we're gonna start to, um, composite everything together and start to adjust line weights, things like that. Export selected. Set my save as type AI, sort of Adobe Illustrator native file. I'll call this plan demonstration line drawing, something like that. Oh, one, why not? I might have to do this again tomorrow or something, right? So, okay, snapshot of current view or preserved model scale. I'm gonna go with eight scale. Why not, right? Just like we did before. I go with eight scale, so preserve model scale, and then say not uh, eight feet equals one inch, right? So one inch in this drawing will equal eight feet. So we were modeling in, in sort of real scale, like one foot equals one foot. Now we're saying every eight feet, um, shrink that down to one inch of our drawing that we are exporting out and bring them to Illustrator. So hit okay. And um, like a cooking show. I have Illustrator already up. Let's open that bad boy up, shall we? All right, so plan demonstration line drawing 01.ai. Here we are. Please use the delete anchor. Oh, sorry, I just, for whatever reason, I have the delete anchor point on here. Go back to that cursor. I'm just gonna in my keyboard shortcuts, remember uh, command or control minus. There we are. First thing I'm gonna do is go to the document, set that up. Um, I'm going to need this to be much larger. Let's go with like 24. Nope. Let's go with like 36 by 36. And let's just go 24 by 24. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Darn it. All right. You see this? I'm just going to maybe center this up on a 24 by 24. All right. So remember, this is my artboard. There are rulers along this artboard. To turn those on, if they're not on for you already, I can go to the view pull down, find rulers and say show rulers. There we are. So now you can see rulers in the X and the Y. That top left corner is my zero, zero point. So midway 12, midway 12. 
So if I select all this chunk now and I say X position in the center will be 12 and Y position should be 12. Okay. Then we can sort of center that up. It's so nice, look at that. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go to the layers and I'm gonna do the exact same thing down here. We've been through this before, right? I'm gonna lock all of these for a moment. I'll call this underlay. And I'm just gonna go to file, is that place? What is, what is it for? Yeah, in Illustrator, place. Not insert, not import, place. Plan rendered underlay.jpg that I generated today at 10, 17. So 16 or six minutes ago, generated this JPEG, which unfortunately has a black background to it where it was transparent before. That's all right. A couple of things I'm gonna do here. Um, one is I'm going to pull it off to the side. I'm just gonna check the viewport rectangle size. So this is set to be 34.4082 inches. So I'm just gonna copy that. So then I'm gonna make this one also 34 point blah, blah, 4082 inches. I'm gonna rearrange this so that's at 12, and 12, all right. Now you can see that I have it here. Now I don't want this black background. And so um, eventually I'll open this up in Photoshop and show you how to fix that. Or we can just create a clipping plane around this whole thing anyway. So we just show what we want. Let's say, you know, after we're done cutting a plan, we cut another plan, right? Like, you know, the plan below this one or something like that. And we start to arrange these um, on, a, on a larger poster, right? Um, but for now, let's just take a look. I'm just gonna go ahead and lock that and um, turn the viewport rectangle on that. That looks good to me, right? Okay. Visible curves, I'm gonna turn off for a moment. Scene silhouette curves, I'm gonna turn off for a moment. Viewport rectangle, I'm gonna turn that off. Oh, my underlay had those, those curves on. Hmm, I wonder how to turn that off. Well, that's annoying, but regardless, I guess it's fine. So here's a couple of things, right? If I did this right correctly in Rhino and I joined all of these up, Rhino will remember these as compound paths, right? That are joined together as closed shapes. I can just select them all at once and I can change their line weight and their, their fill all at the same time, right? So um, I'll go to line weight and I'll say 1.4173 is kind of an oddly specific number. I'll go with 1.5, that's a little better. And then for the fill color, right? Um, maybe instead of going pure black here, um, I'll go with like a darker gray, just, just so you can see just a little bit of that, you know, yeah, it looks kind of nice. Yeah, it looks pretty, pretty, pretty sick. All right. Sick, nasty, if you will. All right. So visible curves on, right? So again, what we're doing is we're adding emphasis to the things that are actually being cut, right? So we can start to see where there's solid parts and where there's not. And then below that, right beneath that, let's say visible curves, go ahead and select those. Sure, I have to unlock them, so that helps, right? Um, I can turn those down just a little bit, a little, a little dark for my taste. Same with the scene silhouette curves. I'm not, I'm not so keen on having so many uh, scene silhouette curves. Let's turn those on as well. In plan, we don't really have to worry about that, right? The emphasis should be on this stuff. In elevation, we worry about the scene silhouette. So I didn't really, I could have turned the scene silhouette stuff off for the plan. Okay. All right. So that's, that's it in a nutshell. I could do a couple more things just to clean this up. I'm gonna lock these layers, unlock my underlay layer once more, make sure that's the active layer. I'll draw a box around this. Right, I'm gonna use that as a clipping mask. So I have this and I have my new shape, object, clipping mask, make. There, just get rid of that stuff once and for all. Ugh. This uh, visible curves, this outline 
that was just simply showing where my plane was. I hate that. Let me get rid of that, get rid of those lines. You can see that those lines were rendered out as well. So let me go back to my underlay here. And that's just, I'm inside the clip group. Let's find that. Let's clip that out a little bit. There we go. Turn that off. Make sure I'm, again, sort of selecting all these extra lines I didn't need from the edge of the surface here. There we go. Just auditing my drawing, just cleaning things up a bit. There we are. Ta da. Right. So, not too bad. Now, I, I didn't actually draw any patterns or anything on the ground plane, um, but you can sort of see, right? Um, based off of the shadows, and I could always differentiate these more by, by, selectively, um, select, by selectively sort of um, changing line weights. You know, first of all, what's being cut by the, the, plan, the section plane? What's closest? What's next closest? What's, you know, furthest back, et cetera, right? So and again, I could always go back here. Are all these turned on? Yeah. I could always go back here and, and just slowly, slightly adjust some of these line weights down a bit more if I wanted to, right? Let's say, um, I'll turn these down to 0.5, just make them a little smaller. Since the alarm is gonna turn off, right? Again, it can be subtle. You know, but since this is, uh, let's say, further back, like almost towards the ground, right? This one as well. Go ahead and turn, turn that one down. Yeah, turn those right. Little subtle things, and the more the 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 you know the closer this is to the final drawing, the more time you can spend on really sort of crafting it, right? Okay. We can see the top edges of things that aren't being cut, but we're seeing an elevation below, right? Whether those are um, looking at the sort of larger planar faces or looking at the sort of edges, right? You can see all of those things. Hmm. It's going to make these things look a little better time, place and place. Okay. Excellent. Any quick questions about that? So there's not, we're doing some new things, but you can see we're building off of a lot of stuff that we've already done, right? So this idea of, of lining up a view, the specific vantage point, specific view for a specific type of drawing, doing a make 2D to get the line work, cleaning that up, bringing it in, you know, using layers to our advantage to sort of select certain parts and, and um, to emphasize or de-emphasize, right? To add hierarchy to the drawing, right? Primary information, secondary information, tertiary information. Um, we can even add a little bit of a, a sort of underlay with tone, right? To get, make things pop a little bit more three-dimensionally since this is a two-dimensional drawing, a two-dimensional representation is something that's three-dimensional, right? So. Okay. There we are. Not too shabby, huh? We have some time. Should I do a, a section as well? Why not, right? Okay. So let me go back into Rhino, right? There is my make 2D of my plan. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this stuff for right now. Okay. I'm done with it for all my purposes anyway. Go ahead and save. All right, I'm gonna go back to all four viewports here. Now, if you'll remember, I have my plan, clipping plane. I, I hit it from view, but I can go back to visibility and show it again and turn it on, right? And it's clipping things in, in uh, perspective view and in top view. I can select that and I can go back to its properties, right? Properties, clipping plane properties. I can turn them on for everything if I wanted to, right? I'm just gonna leave it for perspective and top. Now, let's say I, I really like this clipping plane and I like exactly where it's at and I don't wanna like move it, right? Like once I get, I know exactly where I'm gonna cut this floor plan, 
going to leave that in place, right? I'm going to be really careful. I'm going to go back to my layers. I'm just going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this plan view clipping plane or whatever you know I would name it, right? I have that clipping plane selected. Go to its properties, right? Properties and the color wheel. Look at the layer it's currently on called model and change it to plan view clipping plane, right? Okay. Now I can go back to its properties. I can turn it off for the time being, like don't apply it to any view, right? And I can turn the layer off, but guess what? Later on when I want to recut it, I can just turn that layer back on. I can select it, right? I can go to its properties and pick any viewport I want to sort of apply that clipping plane to, right? So I took that clipping plane once I got it in the perfect place. I'm gonna leave it there, lock it in, put it on its own layer. I can turn that layer off or lock it so I, I don't accidentally do, you know, when I'm done using that clipping plane, but I want maybe want to keep it for later, right? Turn that layer off. I can I can turn it off here, right? Turn its properties off so that it's not actually, you know, slicing a clipping plane through something right for the time being. It's still there, right? Just not active. All right. Now let's cut a section. What do we need? Another clipping plane. In this case, I'm going to be more proactive and actually create the new layer first. I'll call this section clipping plane. Real surprise, right? So much imagination in these layer names. But hey, you know what? The simpler they are, right? usually the more effective they are, right? So in this case, I'm going to go to one of these front or side views, right? One of these elevation views, right? And because that's the easiest way to make a sort of XZ or YZ vertical plane, right? Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll, I'll type in the command clipping plane again. First corner rectangle. And I'm just going to draw right through there. All right, now in perspective view, you can see that there's something goofy going on here in that we're clipping everything away. Yeah, what happened? Our right viewport must have been the active viewport when we typed in the clipping plane command, because right now everything's disappearing in our clipping plane. So let's select this clipping plane. Let's move it into place, right? It's moved through. It's not even slicing through our building, which that's kind of problematic, isn't it? And then we might actually want to look and see which, which viewports it's actually working on, right? So let's look at this first. And that's why sometimes it helps to have all four viewports up at once. If I want to move this laterally, Plan view is probably the easiest way to, to, to sort of see where I'm going with this, right? I can move it in place like this. Let us do that for right now. Why not? All right, so it's actually coming through our building now. And I have the clipping plane selected. Let's go to its properties, properties, and then clipping plane properties, right? So there's a bunch of sub tabs under here. One of them is clipping plane properties. Right now it's set to right view. Let's try to set that for perspective view for a time being. There we go. So now we can see exactly where we're cutting this thing. All right. So same tool that we use for the plane, we're going to use for our section or plan. We're going to use for our section. It is a plane, a clipping plane. Right. Now we can move that through and try to find the most interesting place to cut a section through where we can start to see inside and start to see all of the sort of spatial complexity that you might have um, built into this model. Mine's kind of lame compared to some of yours. Trust me when I say that. I, I'm not just doing that, saying that for being self-deprecating. You guys did a good job. Okay. Maybe I, maybe it's easier to move this and plan a little, a little more carefully. To sort of see where I'm cutting through some things here. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Look at that. Ooh, we're starting to see some cantilevers and other sorts of, you know, some of these are real um, science fiction <laughs> things that wouldn't happen uh, if there was a physics engine in here with some gravity, but you get the idea. All right. And so I'm looking at this in front view. Let's, let's turn that on for front view, right? All right. So you can see my clipping plane is moving in the uh, X direction, right? And so if I look at, you know, basically it's an XZ plane. So I can look at it in front view where the XZ is, is a sort of uh, perpendicular to my, my vantage point, my eyeballs, right? And go to front view. I can do something similar, right? I have my ground plane here that I'm cutting through and then all of these other things. 
So let's take a look, see. Um, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to do a make 2D, right? Make 2D, select objects to draw. I'm just going to select cell all. There we go. Okay. Hopefully I have everything selected. I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to look at these again. I'm going to turn off inlines. I'm going to turn off the scene silhouette. That just sounds silly. Clipping plane intersections, viewport rectangle, tangent edges. Okay. And I'm going to hit okay. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. All right. And before I move away, and I change this vantage point again, I'll just do the same thing I did before. I'll go ahead and set this to maybe save it really quickly. Come on now. All right. Set it to rendered. Oh, there we go. Sure, why not? I'm going to take this clipping plane. I'm just going to hide it. It's still there. It's still working. I'm just not ever going to see it. For whatever reason, this is rendering like the curves. I wonder if there's a there's a way to override that. It's really annoying, but but I'll I'll use it anyway. Don't worry. Um, let's see here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to uh, view capture to file. I'll do this as well. Transparent background, sure, why not? I'll make sure this is a PNG this time. And I'll call this section rendered underlay. Camel case it somehow. There we go. Um, yeah. Now let's go to top view, right? So every time I do a make 2D, it takes that drawing, no matter what, where I was staring at this to get the sample of the drawing, right? It puts it down on that XY plane as if, as if the XY plane is my tabletop and this is a piece of, of paper, right? All right, so let's take a look at this. Okay, so there's the things that we were cutting through. Again, I'm just gonna clean this up real quick. Here we can see we're cutting through that ground plane, that sort of top, uh, edge of top surface of our ground plane, our ground. I'm just going to go through here, just clean some of this stuff up. Go use this trim button, T R I M, is the command. Well, select everything to be used as cutting objects. And I'll just trim the parts that I want away by selecting them. Yeah, boom, boom. You know, it just makes it a little more fun if sound effects. Once I have that done, I can select all of this and hit join. Just join everything up that it can. 31 curves have now been joined into, four, again, coincidentally, four closed curves, right? So we have this floor plane that, that we're cutting through. We have this wall that, you know, that, that sort of transitions to two floor planes, a wall, a roof, another wall or something, or some sort of uh, soffit, you know. Um, okay, so let's see here. All right, turn those back on. I'm going to save. Need to export this out. I'll export this at the same scale, so eight scale. Right? It's really important that all of these things be the same scale. Right? So I'm going to select this stuff. File, export selected. Make sure I'm selecting that drawing. I'll call this section demonstration. Uh, line drawing. Oh, one. Uh, try to keep those sort of labeled as similarly. Preserve model scale, eight scale. So eight feet equals one inch. Hit OK. Save that one more time just for fun. OK. All right. I'm going to open that one up separately in Illustrator. Let's see. Section demonstration line drawing. Here we are. Do the same thing. Let's go through this again. Then eventually I'm going to copy and paste one from things into the other, okay? There's a special way I'm gonna do that so that we don't actually screw up all the layers, right? So if you copied and pasted from one document to the other, sometimes that flattens all your layers, right? We're gonna, we'll talk about how to, how, to, how to keep that from happening. Document set up, edit art boards. I think we made this 24 by 24 or something like that, right? All right, select all this stuff all at once. Here we go. And I will set this to 12. And 12, center it up in that 24 by 24 document for the time being. I'm also going to try to remember its width. Copy. And uh, let's make a new layer. 
drag that to the bottom, call this rendered underlay or something like that. Lock all these others just so we don't actually put the, the JPEG in the wrong one or the PNG in the wrong one. File in place. Let's place that uh, section rendered underlay. There we are. Remember I said this was 40 something and I copied and pasted its width. I'm gonna paste it, all right? That should be the same size. Let's put it in the same position, 12 and 12. Oh yeah, look at that, it's starting to come together. I love it when a plan comes together. All right, so I'm gonna unlock these. Yep, yep. All right, now, all of these are on different layers, right? There's a viewport rectangle and the visible clipping plane intersections and visible curves and underlay. Watch what happens if I select all of these and just copy and I paste them into this other drawing that I did. You're attempting to paste or drag, do you want to unlock and show all appropriate layers? Okay, well, let me hit no for a minute. And sorry, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to set my, my laptop back to the way it probably is for you. Say copy, right? Let's see. And then I'll paste it into here. Okay, right? Now I'm just drag this off. And look what it did. It took whatever the active layer was. And when I pasted this into the document, it pasted all of them onto the same active layer. So now I don't have an, uh, the underlay on its own layer. I don't have the section cuts on their own layer. I don't have the visible lines on their own layer, right? That's really easy to fix that. If you go to the layers box and you go to these options at the top right, right, brings up this menu. And what you can say is you can tell Illustrator, for some reason by default, it doesn't do this. You can say paste remembers layers. What that does is it won't flatten everything and put it on the same layer when you paste it into another document. It'll keep everything separated into the layers that they were in the, from the version that you copied. Okay, so now when I do that, I'll say copy and paste, attempting to drag, yes. So I'll turn everything on at all once and I'll just drag this stuff away. Oops. Oops, sorry, wait. Paste. Yes. All right. I'll just move this stuff off here. Okay. I can actually do this much easier. And width, sorry, the X coordinate I want to be 12, right? And the Y coordinate. I don't want to be 12. I want it to be like higher. I want it to be like sort of lower on the screen. So I'll go with like 24 to move it downwards a bit. Okay. All right. Now I'm just going to move these up all together. Oh, yeah. Move this over just so that the ground is a little centered better. There we go. Turn those viewport rectangles off. Now look. We have a plan and at the same scale, we have the section projected down to it, right? Now they're not quite lined up here. So that's why I'm gonna go ahead and quickly do this. Turn the underlay back on. Oh, I forgot to move this underlay along with it. Oops, I had the underlay. Oh, oh no. Rendered underlay and underlay. Ay, ay, ay. So of course I wasn't, being careful enough. So let me go back. I'm just undoing, of course. It wouldn't be a class without me if we didn't have to undo something that we just did at least once, if not several times, right? Okay. I'll just go ahead and place this in X, 12. Now, why I'll move it downwards 24 ish. Right. Now, the centers might not be exact, so we'll have to worry about that in a moment. But turn on everything, all these interlays here. I had this old one that I copied and pasted in and never deleted. Right. Okay. Just make sure everything's turned on and unlocked so I can move everything all at once. That's what I forgot to do before. How embarrassing. Bush League amateur hour here. Tuesdays are like my Monday. So there is that. I always make that excuse. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
Let's see, that's called underlay. I'll lock that one so I don't accidentally select that. And uh, let's see if I can select all of this without selecting that. And let's just move this over. I'm just gonna try to make sure these line up exactly, right? So you project from one to the other, almost as if there's a magical hinge between the two drawings, right? And you could project from one to the other. In fact, that's how you oftentimes do draw these things, is by, just move these all together at once now, center them up just a little bit more, is by you know working back and forth between plan section and elevation, right? You can project up and down between the two and start to make a decision in section, update the plan, make a decision in plan, update the section, right? We need to clean this up and make it exactly the same as the one before. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the viewport rectangles, I'll lock the underlay so I don't accidentally screw those up. I'm just going to select all of the clipping plane intersection lines. I'm just gonna say, make them all like these. Use the eyedropper tool and select the ones I did before. There we go. Perfection, kind of. Maybe I take this old underlay and I just, I take both of them actually. I just tone them down a bit. You know, just turn the, the opacity down just a smidge. There we go. You can see a little bit of an edge there. Right, I probably would have um, tried to try to. Uh, you know, this is a rendered ground plane, and then this is just sort of white space behind it. So, you know, I would have probably tried to make sure that there's a transition there, so you don't see just a hard edge, which you can just barely make out there. Slight difference, but all in all, there we go. Plan and section. Right now, we're just this is basically just one plan section, right? Um, and so that's what I want you guys to do between now and tomorrow morning. Pick one of your models, your planar compositions for right now, just for overnight, okay? And try this process out. Extract a plan, extract a section, try lining them up. In Illustrator, adjust the line weights, get everything sort of going here, right? Use eight scale, you can use, you know, just make the document large enough to contain both of them. I 24 by 24 kind of works. Um, you know, maybe it works for you too. Don't worry if your document needs to be bigger or smaller than 24 by 24. I'm not that concerned about it, right? I just want to see you go through the steps. I want to see where the pickups, the problems are that we need to solve, right? Um, and you just practice, all right? All right, so with that said, it's gotta be some questions here. Were you guys, who, who here was trying it back at their, their desk in real time or were you just watching or, you know, I'm kind of curious to see probably different, different strategies here. Are there questions at this point or do you just want to try it? No, I want to try it. Want to try it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the recording and stop sharing my screen. I'm going to leave and come right back. Um, once I do that, um, Zoom will start processing the video. So that'll let me upload the video quicker. Um, but I'll come back and then you guys can, while you guys are working for the next 10, 20 minutes, um, and I can ask, answer any questions or solve any hiccups that you have along the way um, as you're starting this. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing.